Let's do it. Let's do it. You heard them. We've got exclusive interviews and footage from the recording sessions of the incredible lineup of stars in Sing 2. We're talking some serious music and acting legends. How many number one hits do we got? Let's dive in. Just imagine it. A spectacular musical. Number one. It's hard to pick which Scarlett Johansson character is our favorite. Black Widow or Ash? The coolest porcupine around. I'm Ash! <laughs> Got yourself. <laughs> the actress has been doing voiceover for years. Seriously, we're talking decades. One of her earliest, Underwater Princess Mindy. SpongeBob, wherever you are, you better hurry! Recording Sing 2 was quite a different experience, though, since they did it all during a pandemic. We recorded it in such isolation. Just because she was often recording alone didn't mean she wasn't digging the whole process, though. Especially when it came to some of the tunes she got to belt out. I don't need the demo, I, I know the song. Number two. Yes, the Bono of U2 is in fact the voice of musician Clay Calloway in the Sing sequel. It is always a party when Bono shows up. As far as personality goes, he was a pretty perfect pick for the part. Some people sing for a living, some people sing to survive. I am one of the, the latter. This was very new territory for Bono, never having done an animated feature film, but he knocked it out of the park. Even the director Garth Jennings could see it. He was just enthusiasm from the start. Curiosity and enthusiasm in equal measure. I mean, you couldn't ask for more. Yeah, we'd be pretty jazzed if we were directing Bono too. In terms of being a director, knowing that this character is going to be voiced by Bono, it's as good as it gets. As for Bono himself's favorite part, well, let's just say he has excellent taste. And we love it too. Number three, it wouldn't be Sing without this fabulous singing pig. I play Rosita in Sing 2. No wonder Reese came back for such a great role. Witherspoon is no stranger to movies or voiceover, but performing in Sing, well, it's literally my dream come true. But of course, that didn't come without intimidation. I had to sing Prince, Ariana Grande, U2. <laughs> I was so scared. It was definitely worth braving through the nerves since the actress found one particularly special song. I got to sing an Ariana Grande song and it was so fun. Singing Break Free, it just felt like there was a song in my heart and just had to come out and it was Break Free and I didn't even know until I got to sing it. It's no wonder her performance is so good with that kind of passion behind it. it. Made me sound good. Number four. This might sound crazy what we're about to say, but yes, that was Pharrell Williams you heard voicing Alfonso in Sing 2. It's such an incredible cast already, and then to add Bono and Pharrell, it's like dreams come true. Yeah, no kidding. What's even cooler is the fact that the singer has never had a major film role before. This was a solid first choice for sure. Fingers crossed we get more Pharrell as animated animals soon. Just testament to the way the audience is connected with the first movie, that musicians of that caliber want to come and be a part of it. It's super, super exciting and quite surreal. Number five, couldn't resist coming back for more Sing Fun. I was falling in love. Kelly isn't usually on a set, and when she is in a recording booth, she's typically singing as herself. Singing is its everything. But this time, her voice gave life to Mina again. I completely forgot that there was a camera on me because you just get so into the scene and into the moment. Recording during the pandemic meant a lot of time was spent in that booth alone. Mr. Moon, I'm not so good in small spaces. Lucky for Kelly, she got to start playing around with her part a bit early. I was like, you know, I have a studio. Like, I didn't want to like have to wait super long, so I just kind of offered it. I was like, I could record stuff if you guys want. Oh, and the vibes? Super chill. It was cool just being at home, you know, like in my sweats. Even when we would go in to record parts in, in their studio, it was just like relaxing. A dream cast, dream songs, what's not to love? I've gotten to sing all these iconic, incredible songs, so I've never once been like, eh, I don't know about this one. Let's maybe try this song. Step, Step together, together drop. drop. Number six. Usually his face is on screen, but who could resist the chance to play the Buster Moon again? Buster's the most active koala that I've that probably there is on the planet in the universe. Voice acting can be a dream for an actor wanting to play around with their performance. That's one of the great things. You don't even have to think about what you're wearing. So I don't know what the hell I was wearing. <laughs> There's nothing self-conscious about it. Try and screw up. Mm. You can't. For the Sing sequel, the Buster Moon actor got to stay close to home to record from my studio in Austin, Texas. Wait, in his own house? Yeah, nice. at my office. That work from home life came with an extra special perk. The movie became a family affair. 
Okay, guys, just like we rehearsed. My daughter Vita got a couple lines no in this movie. Honestly, her role might be better than her dad's. She plays a piglet who's scuba diving <laughs> in chocolate. Either way, our Buster Moon brought pretty special moments to life. We're gonna put the show on whether Crystal likes it or not. But first, we're gonna jump out that window. Dream big dreams. That's what I always said, right? Number seven. Is that a fierce singing gray arctic wolf? Well, sort of. It's also the voice of Halsey shining bright like a diamond. Yeah, Halsey has the most amazing number. It is her first major acting role, but we wouldn't be surprised if there were more after this. She's already very at home inside that recording booth, and guess what? This girl is on fire. Number eight. Who's that impeccably dressed wolf? Introducing Mr. Crystal, AKA Bobby Cannavale. The actor has spent plenty of time in front of the cameras and even in the recording booth for the animated series Big Mouth. But joining the Sing Squad? Well. This is exactly the kind of big idea I'm talking about. Number nine, who else could play this feisty pig so perfectly? And I'm very happy to be back doing Sing. Since the first Sing movie, Crawl has been busy with other projects. Yeah, big time, baby! Including voicing multiple characters, including Nick Birch in Big Mouth with his co-star Bobby. But busy as his schedule is, nothing was gonna stop him from coming back. It's a joy to voice him. While a lot of the other actors in Sing 2 are experienced singers... I like singing, although I'm not very good at it. We'd have to disagree there, though. We dig Gunter singing all the way. I leave my singing to the professional singing, which is probably the wrong way to do it, but it's how it's unfolded. Nah, we think Gunter said it best. Ah, I think we pretty much nailed it. Gunter Robot activating piggy power. Beep, beep, boop, boop. Number 10, the gorilla with the voice of a god. If you could just give me some dance lessons, you would literally be saving my life. We've got Taryn Egerton coming in hot as the fabulous Johnny. Come with me to rehearsal, see for yourself. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Egerton has an impressive resume, including the movie musical Rocket Man, where we got a taste of the voice we hear sounding just as sweet, except coming from an animated gorilla. To re-enter this world and revisit such a lovely, um, character, uh, you know, is, is a dream come true. Working with director Garth Jennings was a solid part of what made the experience so special. You walk into one of those recording sessions, it begins with Garth explaining everything he's been up to since the last time I was there, and then contextualizing whatever bit of the story we're dealing with. Another vital part of this all-star team. Number 11, has there ever been a more fabulous yak? I'm gonna win a ton of awards for this. We think not. Fingers crossed. Andre brings comedy gold to sing too. Unsurprising since he spends so much time recording voices for animated series like Disenchantment and Archer. He's new to the sing crew, but he definitely left his mark. Number 12. Last, but certainly not least, writer, director, and actor in Sing 2, the one and only Garth Jennings. I feel like he loves to act out the characters for you. It's his movie and he can do what he wants to. And who wouldn't want to jump at the chance to portray this fiery iguana? I love Miss Crawley. Jennings was extremely busy on this project and the first Sing movie, which happened to be the very first time he directed a live action animated film. But jumping into the booth? Well, it just made the experience that much better. She is sort of ridiculous and delightful in equal measure and just so much fun to play. It is such a joy to just stand behind a microphone and try and be Miss Crawley. We just can't help but groove around in our seats and tap our toes watching along with the Sing sequel. With such an all-star cast, it's hard not to be impressed. We'll listen to these performers any day. Which character was your favorite? 